and welcome to another exciting episode of uh, German Grocery Unboxing. How are you? And thank you for being here. Um, like I said last week, I'm working on increasing my algorithmic reach, which means for me doing a Facebook Live about once a week. Um, I have some things to show you that you might find interesting today. Plus, I'm going to, I'll show you what, here's my crappy piece of paper. Okay. Today, Wednesday, June 21st, 2023. Do you know what I did right there? I wrote 2003. I wrote 2003. 20 years ago, I was living in England and I had a brand new baby boy. So maybe I just haven't quite gotten my senses back. I don't know. But anyway, it just reminded me of that time. He's all grown up now. Kind of sad. Anyway, proud of him. Okay, uh, I'm going to show you something today called uh, a butterfly pretzel. Der Schmetterling. Okay, that's the word for butterf butterfly. Uh, a German grocery unboxing. We're going to do that today. I'm going to give you a home organization update. And I'm also going to show you how to pick out and chop a pineapple. And also, subscribe to my newsletter if you haven't already. This Friday, I'm sending out a newsletter of chicken dinner recipes, seven chicken dinner recipes. It's all free. And really what it is for me, it's a great writing exercise. So, German grocery Rambo. So this is my uh, shopping basket for today. Look at all that. Look at all I'm cooking today. And we've had a brief reprieve of uh, the uh, tolerable weather. Um, no, it's not the right term. It would be a reap, reap. Well, anyway, we've had a relief of the heat. It's been very hot here. And um, it's raining, which means it's humid. But at least it's not so terribly hot. And I am having a cooking day today. And here in Germany, uh, not many people have air conditioning. So uh, basically our days in the summer are very much heat management. You do everything you want to do in the, in the morning and then you kind of shut your shades and be extremely still in the afternoon. Because uh, it's been hot. Okay, so just measuring pretzel. Check this out. Look at this. It's a butterfly pretzel. It's covered in seeds. Look at this. Okay, so we've got sesame seeds here. We've got some poppy seeds, sesame poppy, and then we've got cheese and pumpkin seeds. How fabulous is that? So I was super excited to find this at the, smells amazing, at, to find this at the bakery today. So that's my German butterfly pretzel. And you know, we've been here for four years. I've never seen one before, but also I am going to the market earlier these days. And a lot of times the really good uh, bakery items get bought up very quickly. I also bought a bunch of these, we would call them Kaiser rolls, right? Um, and because tonight I'm grilling teriyaki chicken on the grill and we're gonna make like sandwiches. They're kind of more like burgers, but, uh, and, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I got a pineapple, I'm gonna to try to put slices of pineapple on each one. Okay, what else do I have? I've got some spinach because I'm going to make, next week for my newsletter, I'm gonna to try to publish a newsletter with like all strawberry recipes. So I wanted to test out my strawberry vinaigrette recipe today. It is hot, but look at my glasses, they're steaming up. Um, I wanted to test out my strawberry vinaigrette recipe today, take a picture of it for my newsletter next week. So we're gonna have a nice, spinach and strawberry salad with feta cheese with a fresh strawberry vinaigrette. Okay, here's my lunch. Last week I showed you how I wrap up my uh, salads in a big old tortilla and make a wrap. So we're gonna attempt to do that today. I got this beautiful lettuce. You know, I'm pretty sure we would call this butter lettuce but I wanted to put some nice lettuce on those teriyaki sandwiches that I'm gonna to grill tonight. So I got that for this, and or I got these for that, and it's beautiful lettuce anyway, so I'll use it one way or another. Okay, what I'm making today, so 
I've been trying to get back to my YouTube videos and it's not easy, especially with the heat like this. Um, but I, 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 I dug deep. I'm like, I'm going to figure out how to do this. Anyway, I've been meaning to make a video on my strawberry rhubarb pie. And so what I'm doing today is I'm going to bake a strawberry rhubarb pie, go over my recipe, kind of figure out how to teach it properly. So I won't have to edit the video too much. And then, uh, that will be the pie that we show on the after. You know how some videos you think, gosh, did they really just bake that and pull it out and then record again? Sometimes, yes, but at heat like this, I just want to have a whole pie baked. So I'm going to bake a strawberry rhubarb pie today. Now these strawberries, they are so fragrant. Oh my gosh. I mean, they're shockingly fragrant. And they were um, raised and picked um, in a nearby town not far from here. And these are those really tiny strawberries that are just full of flavor. So I'm really kind of excited about working with these today. Of course, we have our rhubarb, which the Germans love rhubarb. There's a lot of recipes for rhubarb here. And I really, uh, I, I meant to, you know, do more this year, but we'll have to wait till next year. They have all kinds of rhubarb cake, rhubarb slices, all kinds of baked goods with rhubarb. They're rhubarb enthusiasts. And also, let's see, I've got some limes because in my strawberry rhubarb pie, I put just a little bit of lime zest. It really makes it sparkle. All right, feta cheese for my spinach and strawberry salad with the strawberry vinaigrette. I don't know if I had a purpose for this mint, but I decided to get a mint plant nonetheless I thought it might be nice on my strawberry salad. I'm not sure, but they're beautiful. They smelled amazing. So I decided to get some mint. Mints, okay. And lastly, uh, green onions for my strawberry salad. Okay, so I've got a pineapple here and I wanted to show you how I cut up a pineapple now, I know about pineapples because we lived in Okinawa, Japan for four years. And of course, they do a lot of uh, pineapple farming in Okinawa. And they have, there's different varieties of pop, uh, pineapple. So if you've ever seen that, I don't know, it was maybe during the pandemic when there was this meme going around or something that's saying that all you had to do to eat a pineapple was to like smash it and then pull these out and eat them. And everyone was like, wait, how have I never heard of this before? Well, the reason why you've never heard of that before is, be is because it's for a specific type of pineapple, which in, um, in Okinawa, they just called it a snack pineapple. And um, it's a smaller pineapple, it's round, and the, uh, the little thistles here, the indentations are much deeper. And so really all you have to do is smack those pineapples, you know, really hard. And then you just pull out the little things and eat them. So if, you know, if you're thinking to yourself, wait, you know, if you did remember seeing that and you thought, wait, how come I have never been able to eat a pineapple like that? It's probably because you didn't have the right kind of pineapple. But this is just our regular, see, where were these grown? How interesting. In Germany, it's a Finding Nemo pineapple. What? That's crazy. Anyway, um, I, I mean, I'm understanding a little bit about how to read some German, but I still can't see a name here. So here, so I'm going to show you how I chop up a pineapple. Now this pineapple, so this is all mirror image, they're telling you to slice this in fourths like an apple and then core the core out. and. The, no, 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 that's not how you do it. That's how I do it, okay? No judgment. Anyway, to slice up a pineapple, first of all, actually, to pick out a good pineapple, you need to find one that is a little darker on the bottom, okay? And you need to pick it up and smell it. Does it smell like a pineapple? Then it's probably ripe, okay? Don't go so far as to get ones that have mold on the bottom. But they do, you know, if you just have a really green pineapple that's green the whole, the whole thing through, that's not a ripe pineapple. And I'm thinking this one might be a tad overripe. 
I'm not sure. So let's just find out. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut the top off. Oops. That smells really, really ripe. So I just cut the top off like this. Now there's, I know people used to do this and I know probably some people do, but apparently you can plant this and it grows a pineapple. So if anyone does that, you know, let me know. I think I tried to do it like 25 years ago and it just kind of molded and I got really yucky. So I threw it out. But anyway, I have seen people who, who are able to do that properly. Okay. Serrated knife, right? A bread knife. I'm just going to cut the bottom off. Now we're going to see for sure if this is overripe or not. Okay. So this is just on the cusp of being overripe, although it is actually perfect. So I'm very happy with this. So then you take your serrated knife and you just go down the sides of your pineapple. Um, now I'm going to do something that some people do and they use a corer, but I'm going to try to take the core of the pineapple out because I really wanted to serve my teriyaki chicken sandwiches with a, you know, a round slice of pineapple and I wanted it to be fresh pineapple and I wanted the slices to be extra thick. So that's why I opted for a fresh pineapple that I could slice myself. So let's see if I can do that today. Okay, so while I'm doing this, I'm gonna update you on my home organization projects. First of all, um, we never live in a house longer than four years. We've been here for four years. We've never lived in a house longer for four years. We're always PCSing to our next duty station. So this is uncharted territory for me. And a few months ago, I was walking around. So right here, that's the core of the pineapple. You can tell because it has just a slightly different texture. So watch this, soft, hard, okay? So I'm just, some people take this round cylinder and they can just push it through. Um, but I, I, can't, I don't have one and I looked for one at the market. Big surprise, they don't sell them in Germany. So, or at least at the market I went to. So I'm just gonna take this very thin serrated knife and draw around it. We'll see if we can get this core out so I can make big slices for my teriyaki chicken sandwiches. Okay, so a few months ago, um, I was noticing like my house, like, wow, there's a lot of, you know, fingerprints on the walls and why is this place filthy? It's because we've never lived in a house longer than four years, usually, and, you know, after four years of a house, I mean, I like to deep clean really about once every six months, but there is something that happens to a house after a family has lived in it for four years, you know, um, it, it, you know, you need a new coat of paint. You just kind of need to freshen up where in every other house we've lived in, we PCS by that time and we leave and we start fresh somewhere else. Also, uh, whenever we PCS, I get rid of a ton of stuff we don't need anymore. And so I realized here in this house that we've been in for four years that I was going to have to make an effort to do that kind of purging without uh, the ominous threat of a PCS, permanent change of duty station for you non-military people, without the ominous threat of a PCS looming, okay? And so... Um, that's what I've been doing over the weekends is kind of cleaning stuff out and getting rid of stuff. And this last weekend, how did I do here? This is not looking like it's going to work. Let me try again. Last weekend, I think I offloaded probably 20 bags of nice clothes, okay, to the thrift shop on base. Um... And so that really took all weekend to just go through it all. And so, you know, we still have five kids at home. And so these are a lot of my clothes, a lot of the kids' clothes. And I'm sure I still have more to offload. So really part one of the summer for me, this is maybe this is going to work. Part one of the summer for me is, ah, it's slightly budging, is um, purging and then... I'm going to reorganize the storage room, which, um, I mean, that's a whole other, I don't know, maybe I'll be able to do a video from the storage room. That would be nice. But right now I just, I can't, it's just too much of a mess. I had 
Two summers ago, I spent basically a month in the heat. Well, it was the basement, so it wasn't that, wasn't that hot. But it was right after my son left for the Marine Corps. It was really hard. I had to, and I went and I, I call it unasked. That's a military term, Marine Corps term, unass. I unasked the storage room day after day after day. And it was, I mean, it was hard. I had to slog through it. So if you probably can uh, imagine that I don't feel very joyful going in there. So we'll see if I can turn it into more of a happy place. Okay. Still, tr oh, <gasps> okay. One of them, okay. Maybe that's how we do it. Maybe it comes out not just one piece. Okay. So anyway, not, not a big fun summer. Ooh, here's another piece. Not a super big fun summer right now. And the pool across the street still hasn't opened yet, but that's okay because, whoops, time is ticking by. I'm going to have a senior next year. I tell you what, time goes by so fast. So my third child will graduate from high school in 2024. And all of the kids who are at home, which are five kids, they are all going to be in sports and activities. So that means that it's going to be a very, very busy school year. And I really want to try to enjoy it, you know? I don't just want to just like, ugh, you know, slog through it. Time, time goes by so fast. And um, so I'm going to try and enjoy it. I'm going to try and enjoy it. So anyway... I'm starting now by decluttering. I'm gonna stock the freezer with food so I don't get too stressed out. Let me just wipe my hands on something here. Okay. Okay, here it is, I did it. I cored the pineapple. Now it didn't come out in one big core, okay, like I thought it would. It came out in little slivers. So tonight I'm going to grill I'm grilling a boneless, skinless chicken thigh that I'm gonna marinate and then uh, season and then grill and cover with teriyaki sauce. I'm gonna keep it in one piece. So then I'm gonna serve those chicken teriyaki chicken thighs, boneless, skinless, on some fresh Kaiser rolls. We'll see how it goes. And I wanted to put these gigantor, this big old chunks of fresh pineapple on there. And I wanted them extra thick. So that's what I'm going to try to do. It smells so good. I really want to eat this right now. But I also want to save it for my family to go on those sandwiches tonight. But anyway, so that one, two, three, four, five. That'll make about six, which is fine. But little Rosie is not really interested in complex flavors right now. <laughs> She'll probably just enjoy a little chicken and a little rice. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna make my strawberry rhubarb pie, and then hopefully next week I'll have a video to share of my pie recipe. And I'm gonna do some other things. So this week, whoops, where is it? I'm gonna try to, I'm really working on my newsletter and trying to send one out every week. Here's my website, so you can go there. This is all mirror image. And then these are the recipes that I'm going to share in my newsletter on Friday. And those are seven of my family's favorite chicken recipes. And you know, of course, I have more, but uh, I'll send those on, I don't know, a part two of chicken dinners, which maybe will include this teriyaki chicken sandwich as well. Anyway, it's hot still. You know, the sun's not out, there's a big cloud cover, but it's still hot. So I'm gonna turn some fans on and try and do my cooking before it gets much, much hotter this afternoon. So thanks so much for being here. I'm gonna put this on my YouTube channel for what it's worth. Um, not a lot going on there, but I'm trying. And also I think I'm gonna make a page on my website of just all my grocery unboxing and updates. So I do appreciate, appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. I know it's uh, awkward timing with being in Germany. And so maybe if you're in the United States and you are up early or you have insomnia, maybe this helps. Um, most nights I have insomnia too. So I do understand. So um, anyway, I'm going to go take care and I'll talk to you soon. 
I'll put some links to some stuff in the comments, like to the newsletter. That's what I'll do. Take care. Bye-bye.